door hanger don'ts. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the history of door hangers and why we use them. So door hangers come in many shapes and forms and over the years we've done just thousands and thousands of these things. Typically today this is what the door hangers look like. Give you an idea what we use today which is basically like a four by six postcard and uh, you know we have them for all of our different businesses and whatnot. So uh, the history of them is basically this. If you've never used them before, uh, we use these things to get directly to the consumer. Okay? So, for example, if I'm out trying to stir up lawn care clients, for example, I'm going to go in the neighborhoods that I want to work in, and I'm going to start placing these on everybody's door. And I just go up and I stick them in the crack of the door or in their screen doors. You know, you might fold them up like this and just stick them in there. Whatever it takes just to get them in place, right? So people know about you. They know you're there. They know you exist. It's a very cheap form of advertising. They are a little labor intensive to get out. You know, it's going to take you a bit to get these things out, but it is definitely well worth it. The return on investment is very good. Now, the return on investment, I guess to give you an idea of it, you could figure on about 1%, I think would be accurate. Uh, so, in other words, if you hand out 100 of these, you're probably going to get one call, okay? Depending on a number of factors. Number one, you got to have a good card. You have to have things that are, you, know, you got to have a good print on it. They got to look good, nice and shiny, clean, clean cut. They're not, they don't look like junk, you know what I mean? Your message has got to be good and they got to have a reason to call you. So, if it's in that springtime of the year, for example, and you want to go out there and create some lawn care clients, Time to advertise is right then, in the spring. Get them out right then. The majority of your calls are going to come when there's an actual need for it. Like, you wouldn't advertise this in the wintertime for a lawn care company because they're just not going to be calling you. They might save it. They might put it on their fridge. And I'm not saying they don't because they do. But uh, you're certainly going to have a better return on your investment, better percentage if you market to them during the peak time. You know, like say mosquitoes for the mosquito police business, for example. As soon as the mosquitoes become active, our phone starts to ring off the hook because we market like hell right during that time. So, that being said, that's a little bit of the history of the door hangers and what they do for you. But, don't just, uh, don't just throw it together. I want to tell you guys that when you're putting these together, this is the don'ts, okay? You want things to look nice. You want them to look good, okay? So, this is one that... We want it to look really personal, so this is myself, my wife, and uh, the family here. Uh, so you can kind of see, I'm not going to sit here and hold up each one of these and everything that, that was on them, but you got a front and a back, and you know, you just put on your bullet points. You want your bullet points on here. I could do a, a whole video just on door hangers. Um, if you guys want to see it, I can put something together on that. But for now, I'm just going to touch base. This is what you don't want to do. You don't want to just throw them together. If your door hanger just simply looked like this and it was just bland and there was really not a whole lot lot to it right um, early on we made some of those mistakes and we have learned over the years to really take your time put them together well think them out think out everything you're going to put on those things i would write it down on a list and i would say okay now i don't want to jam so much in there that it's just garbled all together and there's a million words in there and they got to try and read all of that because they won't spend the time to do that you know your prospective customers will give you just a few seconds to scan over these things okay so if it's something they're interested in you have something big and bold like this like 50 percent off that grabs their attention now if i put something on there like 10 percent off they could probably care less. They get that every day, all day long from every company out there. 50% off of what? That's That grabs their attention, right? So you always want to design them in such a way that you are grabbing their attention. Don't just slap them together any old way. Take the time because they cost money and they cost you money to put out, okay? Whether you're trying to do them on foot, whether you're using scooters, we use all kinds of things to get them out. We use four-wheelers. We use little scooters. Uh, we use motorcycles. We use um, uh, little segways. We use golf carts. We do all kinds of things to get these things out. So the last thing you want to do is put out a piece of crap-looking uh, flyer and then do all the work to get them out, and they look like shit and nobody calls you. All right? So pay attention to that. Um, 
don't forget the call to action. Whenever you guys are putting these things together, you've got to have a call of action on there. Um, so, for example, let's see, let me find some on here. So, okay. So, here's a typical one uh, for our mosquito police. And if you see the area right there uh, where it just tells you to call today, right? Yeah, call today. It's got the number on there. Okay. So, you want to always have a call to action on them no matter what. Make sure that you put that on there. Believe it or not, people like to be directed. They need to be directed. Okay, so we put it on there and it made a huge difference for us. You know, and there's a lot of things that we did that made a big difference. You want all your contact information on there. You know, you're going you're gonna to want, you, know, you got the phone number there. You're going to want your email address on here. Maybe, maybe you want your website on there. There's all kinds of things that you can put on these things. Make sure they have multiple ways to contact you. And uh, that'll make a big difference also in your return on your investment. All right, let's see. So, um, all right, so the, the, the information that you put on this card, for example, if you guys take the time, any one of these, if you look at this card and it kind of describes to you what we do and all the little things that we do, probably having a hard time holding that steady for you guys, but... Then on the back, we give them a reason to call us, okay? Here's here's who we are, here's what we do. If you guys need to pause this, go ahead and do that, all right? And this is just one card. There's there's several of them. You know, our, our uh, mosquito police, for example, uh, the one we did here, we, we designed it to trigger two things. We, we go after mosquitoes and ticks, okay? Well, the mosquitoes bother the people, right? But they transfer all these diseases and all that stuff. And so do ticks, okay? With the Lyme's disease and they kill dogs and stuff, okay? So, for example, there's our dog, Jerry Lee. And, uh, you know, he's our mascot here, basically. So this side of the card is designed for pet owners. And this side of the card is designed for family. Okay, so one side for people, one side for pets. So you may not be a big one for the family type thing. You might be living there yourself, but you may have a pet that you absolutely love. And when you see that, you're going to be like, you know what? Yeah, you know, help these guys. Uh, okay, so we have on here, help us get to, get to them before they get to your pets, right? So we have that right there. So therefore, we throw that idea up to them and give them something to think about. And most people will do anything for the pets because they love them. I'm the same way. I love my pets. So anyway, very important to do that. Um, all right, distributing off-season. Do not waste your time distributing these things in the off-season. And I'll tell you why. Because it is very difficult to get that phone to ring if I'm trying to get someone to call for mosquito spraying in the middle of winter, right? just doesn't make sense to advertise to them then. Advertise, get these things out when the season is upon you or just prior, okay? When April showers come and they know this grass is going to start to grow, that's a perfect time to get out there and start hustling your business, all right? All right. Um, I, I've gotten this from a few people and uh, they have shied away from door hangers because now everybody's got these doorbells that have a little camera on them and everything. And I'm like, are you guys kidding me? I can't imagine why anybody would be afraid of that. If I'm going door to door and I'm putting these out, I'm, I see those all the time. They don't bother me in the least. I could care less. You know why? Because I'm not up there stealing their packages. And I'm not up there breaking into their house, okay? So why would it bother me whatsoever? There's some of these lawn care guys that have left me some comments and said that they're upset about this, right? That they... They won't do it anymore because of the cameras. I mean, what are you guys afraid of? I mean, it's ridiculous to be afraid of that. Okay, next thing you want to focus on is don't make them look like everybody else's. Okay, so does everybody else have this picture on them, for example? This picture is designed to show a family atmosphere, <coughs> the name of the company, Family Lawn and Landscape, right? And it shows a nice family here, right? So... The whole thing is to be more personable, and it's way better than what the majority of people put out there, you know? So you want to design it different. You don't want to look like everybody else's. There's got to be something on that card that's different. Now, we did some that are like this that we are, we are putting out to our customers for seasonals, 
application. So uh, you've got this on one side, on the back side. I don't know if you guys can see all of that. Try to get it to where you can see it. All right. But uh, show you this again. So now this is when the ladybugs come out. So for us up north here in Wisconsin, so that's in the fall. So when that comes out, these cards, the only time these cards are going to go out is when they start coming out. When these bugs start coming out, we start hitting people with these. Okay. Now, that's just one of them. Now we have other ones. Okay. That have all these little critters on them. And the spiders. So what happens with the spiders? They're all around the lakes. Everybody's got them over there. So therefore, what do we have? Ants on there, spiders on there. Yeah, so again, the call to action. Here is your, here is all the things that we take care of, all the things that we do. And again, when does that come out? When the spiders come out, when the spiders get active. We also have a thing uh, around us. So like the black flies, the horse flies, the deer flies, things of that nature. So when that comes out, we have a flyer set up for that. And we'll use that flyer to go out during the time when these pests are actually out bugging people. That is the time. That is the time. You let them know about everything that you have on the back, but they're all specific to that time of year that you're going to go out and deal with this. Deal with the problem, right? All right. So that being said i want to tell you guys i mean this is well this is one i, I think i kind of showed you guys with our, our vape shops that we did something a little different on that one you saw the landscape one you saw the mosquito police you saw all of those we have we do these every year we come up with new ones every single year and don't listen to the naysayers that tell you these things don't work because they do work and they're very inexpensive to get out um, you can leave me a comment down below if you like and i can turn you on to um, the people that we actually have do ours and they do a good job for us and they they won't rip you off So you can get like 5,000 of these for 200 bucks, you know, but you got to get them when they're on sale That's the thing and they always have them 75% off, you know uh, when they do it. That's when we buy them. So right now um, I can look right in this room behind me here and I know that I probably have 50 boxes of door hangers that are waiting to go out Okay, that's how well they work, and we just keep using them over and over again because they work, and we know how to work with them, all right? So, another don't is don't shy away when the naysayers tell you these things don't work. If they tell you, oh, just go to digital and blah, 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 well, they can do that all they want. These things produce leads. They, they make a lot of money for us, all right? That being said, um, don't neglect your neighborhoods. When you get a job in a neighborhood, I've often talked about this, you really make a lot more money when you create density in the neighborhoods, right? So you don't want to neglect doing your neighborhood research. You don't want to market these things in areas where you're probably not going to sell yourself. So for example, uh, if you're a landscape company, and let's I'll give an example of my small town that I live in. So small town of Antigo, Wisconsin, there's like 8,000 people. It's not a, a real poor town, but it certainly isn't a rich town. There's not been a great deal of uh, big businesses that have opened up in this town. So the industry never really came because of multiple reasons. But uh, regardless, they're not here. So the high, higher paying jobs are not here. So therefore, people don't have money that they can afford to pay someone like me to come in and put a $10,000 pay for patio down for them. Okay, that doesn't happen every day. Now, on the other hand, if I advertise around the lake houses, people that own houses around lakes, every other day I, I get to a job on doing a paver patio or a retaining wall or something like that because they have the money to pay me. So do your research. Don't just throw them out. You need to market where the money is. Okay, market for your service. So example, once again, I'll, I'll bring this up about the mosquito police, right? Same thing. Where am I going to market with this? I'm not going to market in the city of Antigo. I'm, even though they have mosquitoes there, I'm going to market all around the lakes because the mosquitoes are terrible there and those people have the money to pay me, right? If they're along a river, they might have a ton of mosquitoes uh, that are there, but maybe those people don't can't afford our service. I don't know. We still market along the rivers, but by far we do way better around the lakes. So that's just the way it is. The lake people have the money. They can afford your service, so therefore they're willing to pay for it. All right, that being said, um, 
the last thing I'm going to leave you guys with is extremely, extremely important for you to know. You've got to be able to trust whoever's putting these things out. You have got to. You cannot just trust anybody to do it. And I tell you this because I have done it over and over again. I've hired people specifically for putting out door hangers, and I have been disappointed every single time. And the only way that I've been able to get around that is actually being with them when they're putting it out, or I put GPS trackers on them so I know they're in those neighborhoods. And even then, that doesn't work because if they know they're being GPS tracked, which you make it clear to them, yeah, I'm watching you, so make sure you're out doing your job. It's difficult to know they're doing it. I've had guys show up in a neighborhood, park the vehicle there, so the GPS unit shows that they're parked in that neighborhood. Then I get a call from a church, you know, I don't know, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the afternoon or even the next day that says, hey, we want you to come back here and pick up all these door hangers. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What door hangers? I go there and I pick up a stack like this that were given to those guys, which is, you know, two, three hundred of them, uh, to get out that day or 400, whatever it was, threw them in the trash. That vehicle stayed right there, and I thought they were there the whole day. You know what they did? They had their friends come pick them up, and they went bumming for the day. So I paid them guys to do nothing. So you really got to be creative. And by the way, speaking of being creative, maybe some of you guys could share some of your comments down below. Let me know what you do. If you do use the door hangers, what do you do to make sure... These guys are getting them out. Leave me your comments down below. Let me know any interactions you've had, good or bad. I always love hearing from you guys. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. If you liked our, our channel, hit the like button. And don't forget to hit the little, little uh, bell there, which gives you a notification every time I put out a new video. Thanks for watching, and I hope I was able to help.